So I was deburring the last six of the horizontal stabilizer in spar ribs, and I got to the part that I hate, which is trying to figure out how to get down in the little notches, uh, all the little notches between the rib flanges. And I kind of happened upon a method that I thought was worthy of its own separate video. And maybe everybody else has already got this figured out, or maybe everybody's got a much better way to do this uh, than what I'm about to describe, but I thought I'd throw it out there. So, of course, there's a lot of different tools uh, that we use to deburr. So there's the deburring tool and this deburring tool itself, which is uh, kind of too big to get down in those notches. And at least I'm afraid that I'll just, you know, gouge it out and, you know, put a put a nick down in there in the radius or that sort of thing. So I don't really use this in, in these notches here. There's itty bitty files and uh, same kind of thing. This, this is the smallest file I have, I think, and it's pretty tight getting in that little notch and I'm afraid I'll just, um, you know, kind of mess it up. So I don't really use that down in there either. Uh, you can take Scotch-Brite pad and just you know, run it through there a bunch and probably what a lot of people do. In fact, that's what I do is sort of the, the final operation to smooth everything out in there. But it, it goes through this stuff pretty quickly. It kind of shreds it up and makes a mess of it. And, and so, you know, it'd be pretty, take a pretty good while and, and go through a lot of this stuff to, to do all the notches and all the ribs just that way. So uh, what I've been doing so far, really up to this point, was using this uh, tip that I got off of one of Plain Lady's videos, which is a great tip. Um, you take a, uh, you know, you, you make a little wedge shape, I guess, out of a piece of 3M wheel. You cut these wedges out of it, put it on a mandrel, put it in your Dremel and, uh, or drill, and then you can kind of get down in here, and that works pretty well. Uh, that, like I said, that's what I've been doing up to this point, really, on all these uh, these ribs. But the problem I have with this is, um, first of all, the, 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 the tip is pretty pretty pointy, and the, therefore it wears away pretty quickly. So, you know, you can watch it uh, disintegrate at, with each with each notch and you, know, you end up going through a bunch of these or having to keep changing you know fixing the shape of the tip and then the other thing is I don't do a very good job with this in the the straight parts of, of the notches so I was really trying to find a better way to do that and as I've done with a lot of deburring lately I have sort of resorted to just sandpaper and you know we have a lot of different sort of specialized tools and materials for working on the plane. But again, I've kind of just grabbed some sandpaper off the shelf um, a lot lately. And that doesn't mean it replaces all this stuff, but it also um, is a nice supplement. So this is just 400 grit, whatever I happen to have. There's probably some better choices, but again, it's what I happen to have. And I was using it to, you know, to get in there and, uh, you know, get the straight part but I was purposefully avoiding, you know, having the crease of the sandpaper really get down into the radius area because, again, I didn't want to notch that or, or you know, cut a, cut, a, um, cut a gouge in it. But I had taken some cardboard. What have I done with it? Here we go. I had taken some cardboard and folded it up and was using it to sort of add to the thickness. And at that point, you know, I was feeling pretty good because I had gotten it to sort of the perfect thickness that I could just put it in one of these notches and just zip, you know, just a couple of couple of swipes and felt like I was really getting the straight part deburred really well. But for the radius, what I ended up doing was I took and made a little tube, for lack of a better term, out of a, a piece of tape. Uh, this Gorilla Tape, to be precise, not a sponsor, uh, but I, I, I picked this Gorilla Tape because, once again, I had it laying around and this stuff is like duct tape on steroids. The adhesive is really thick and therefore uh, really sort of, you know, provided a good padding. Uh, and so I rolled it up kind of backwards, made a little tube, taped it on the edge of this cardboard, which seems kind of, kind of hacky and, you know, it, it is. But the idea being that that tape made a nice little perfect radius for the edge of the sandpaper and a nice soft cushion that I could get in these notches and just with a couple of swipes, just just like that, just a, a couple of swipes in each direction, you know, kind of kind of at a slight angle to you know catch the edge and deburr, 
And man, that, that worked perfectly. And you know, of course you, sandpaper wears out, you just pick a different piece, this tiny little piece, right? So anyway, I thought that worked really well and I'm gonna save this thing. It was kind of convenient where the tape was, since it was rolled up backwards, it was sticky and the, the sandpaper would actually kind of stick to it, at least where it was exposed. Um, I'll probably try and redo this and, you know, expose more sticky area of the sandpaper uh, next time. Although I realized these are the last six ribs that I'm going to have to do this uh, to on the empennage. So I guess I'll save this for wing ribs, maybe? Uh, I'm sure there'll be other little, little nooks and crannies I need to get into with something like this. But anyway, uh, I guess that's my tip. Use, uh, use tape uh, and make a little you know, a little form-fitting, cushioned, uh, radius-following sandpaper holder. Anyway, there you go.